Work sharing is a process that allows multiple users to work on the same Revit file at the same time. This is a feature that users have enjoyed for several releases of Revit now. With the inception of Revit Lite, however, it might become difficult to create a workflow whereby a work shared team works with that independent Revit Lite user. We're going to look at how we can go back and forth between Revit and Revit Lite using a work shared project file. Here I have Revit 2013 running from the Building Design Suite Ultimate. Uh, I'm going to go open up a central file from the recent files window, selecting open here, and you'll see it takes me out to a folder where the central file is located. And when I select a central file, Revit automatically wants to create a new local file down here at the bottom. I can also detach the central file from the network so that it becomes independent again, and then I have the option to preserve the work sets or eliminate them altogether. In this case, I'm going to make a local file. A local file is nothing more than a copy that the user on the team works in day in and day out. And then periodically throughout the day, they synchronize their design changes back and forth between the users via the central model. So I'm going to select open here. And what Revit is going to do is going to copy the central file to my local workstation in a directory that's defined inside the application. And it's going to append the copy's name with my name uh, onto the file. So you can see here it says the same file name, but it appends it with underscore builtin.nittle. Now if I tile my views, you'll notice I have two views open here. So let's talk about Revit and working as a team. Well, I have a collaborate tab up here that gives me a full breadth of tools to collaborate both internally within my own company or externally with consultants. We're going to primarily focus internally here, so I have two panels for synchronizing my local file with the central file and any kind of requests and uh, relinquishing I have to do there. And then I have my worksets panel which allows me to interact, interact with the uh, worksets. So uh, I have a menu here that allows me to select the current worksets I wish to work on. And then I have a worksets button that allows me to access the worksets dialog to see all the various worksets of the project file. Currently I'm looking at the user created worksets. These were created by the team manually. Uh, the other three checkboxes down here were created by Revit and they're also managed by Revit. So you can see here I got a couple of work sets that are already set up in the project and from this central point I can control whether I see them in every view of my project using this column here. I can also close a work set if I wish not to see it uh, throughout the model. Sometimes you'll work on large projects where you need to partially open the model and you can select which work sets you want to open that day. I also have owner and borrower columns here which tells me whether or not a whole work set is owned by a single user or elements within the work set are being borrowed by multiple users. If I look at the views themselves, I have some options that I can play with here as well when it comes to work sets. I can come down to the view options bar and turn on work set display. So I can display work sets based on their checkout status, owners, model updates, and work sets. Let's just look at work sets for instance. So what this will do is it will graphically override the view to show the elements which work set they are on by color. So I can see here that there are several colors inside of this view, uh, primarily two that I'm looking at here, magenta and like a cyan color. And in terms of the colors here, the uh, magenta color represents the core and shell work set while the cyan here represents the fit out work set. And these doors here should be on a different work set. We'll get to that in a minute. A couple other things that I can do with work sets within full Revit is control their visibility at the view level. So we saw it at the work set dialog level project global settings, but here's we can look at it at the view level. So I'm going to go and open up my uh, visibility graphics dialog and you'll notice that for this view I have a work sets tab which allows me to come in here and show or hide or use the default settings for the work sets. So let's say I want to hide the core and shell for instance. I can come in here and pull down the visibility setting menu and say hide. And then if I pull this aside and hit apply, I can see that it hides all the elements that are on that work set. I can also bring it back. So I'll just use the global settings here to bring it back. Now, aside from hovering over elements and getting their tooltip, I can also access their work set via their properties. So here I had that door that's the wrong color on the shell of the building, and I want to switch it to the right work set. Well, all I need to do is come over to the properties now 
and change its work set. So I got a property here that I can interact with that allows me to move it to the correct work set. And once I've done that, the color will change to match the appropriate work set that it's on now. I can repeat the process as many times as I need to. Now what is happening here as I'm picking those elements, I'm actually checking them out of the work set and working on them as a borrower. So when I switch this over to Core and Shell here in a minute, I became the borrower of that element. So one thing that the central file is doing is it's watching who is working on what within the models as they are being worked on by a bunch of team members. So if I go to the work sets dialog at this point in time, I can see that I'm a borrower of the fit out work set because I was working on those two doors. Now when it comes to creating information and modifying information, it's rather simple. What I can do here is I can modify elements regardless of whether or not uh, what work set they're on. So I can pick this door, maybe flip it, and then move it down the wall here to the other side. Um, so maybe I want to move it, uh, let's say, four inches away from that corner. So this might be locked in place, so I might have to go and pick it to see if there's a constraint in place, which there is. So I'm just going to relieve that constraint, and then I'm going to come down here and move it over. So I can modify elements within work sets. I can also create new elements. So if I right click on that door and hit create similar, it'll actually create a new door, but you'll notice that it's going to put it on the core and shell work set. So before I go and place it, maybe I want to change it to the right work set, which is fit out here, and then place the door into the model. So if I pick that door now, you'll notice that it went on the work set fit out. And the interesting thing about tags is that they go on the view work set that I'm currently in. So this view has its own work set and those tags go into that work set. So that's the thing that I was talking about where uh, certain work sets manage themselves inside of Revit. Now after I make changes and additions to the database, I need to synchronize those changes to my team members. So I need to push these new modifications up to the central file. And to do that, I come to my collaborate tab and I synchronize with the central file. I can also synchronize from the quick access toolbar here. I'll just synchronize via the ribbon real quick. And then I can save my local copy. So I'm pushing changes up to the central. I'm loading changes that my team has made to my local file. And I'm also saving my local copy. This is how we work in a work shared environment in full Revit. Now, when it comes to that individual using Revit Lite, it becomes a little bit of a complicated process. What I need to do is contact my team that's working on this project on full Revit and tell them to close out of the local files altogether. So I'm going to go and close out of the local file to completely get out of the project. And now what the BIM lead would have to do on the project team is they would have to go and take the central file and copy it to the directory where the Revit Lite user could use it. So one thing that you could do to safeguard the Revit Lite user from getting into the work shared file is to put permissions or sharing security options onto the folders in which the files are located. So here I've copied over the file to the Revit Lite user's folder. And now the Revit Lite user can go open up that RVT. So just like in full Revit, here I am in Revit Lite 2013. I'm going to go open up that LT user file that was copied for me and there's a central file that was copied over and you'll notice that there's no options at the bottom here inside of Revit LT. That's because work sharing is not enabled in this product. But I can still work on that project file. So I'm going to select open and Revit LT will go and open up that copy of the central file. I'll just expand my ribbon here and I'll go open up the floor plan that we saw back in full Revit and I'll tile my views. So now side by side you can see the model that I was working on back in full Revit. Well, you'll notice that there are some limitations right away. If I look at the ribbon, there's no collaborate tab. So there's no way for me to get to the work sets dialog. There's no way to uh, make the work sets active if you want to switch them when you go to add things. Also, if I go into the view, there's no option down here on the view options bar to display work sets by color. 
However, I can still hover over elements inside the view and it tells me which work set it's on. So the tooltip here will tell me which work set the elements are on as I hover over them. So the work sets are still there, but I just can't interact with them. I can also pick elements inside Revit LT that are on a work set. However, I cannot access their work set parameter. It's not available. Even the view, if I go to its visibility graphics within Revit Lite, I can't access the work sets tab. So I'm locked out of the work sets altogether. So can the Revit Lite user make modifications to a model even though they're not work sharing necessarily? Well, absolutely. If we zoom in onto those two rooms where that door was added back in full Revit, I can pick it. And the nice thing is, is that this door should be swinging into 104 because it's labeled as 104. So I'm going to switch it. I'm also going to make it come closer to the outside wall here. So there you can see I can make modifications to doors and other model elements within Revit Lite, even though they're on work sets. I can also add annotation elements to the view. So if I go to my annotate tab and I add dimensions, so let's say we want to dimension the location of that door. I can add dimensions. So I still have access to similar tools that I have over in full Revit. Now the interesting thing here is that even though I'm not really working in work sets, I am still working on a unique work set inside of Revit Lite. You'll notice that when I go create elements that Revit Lite creates a work set of its own. So let's go create an element. I'm going to select architecture from the tabs on the ribbon and I'm going to select component. And let's say we need a couple of desks in the conference room. So I'm just going to go place a couple of desks. And if I click on modify to cancel the command and come back and hover, you'll notice that it created a work set called Revit LT user. So Revit Lite created a dedicated work set for new elements to go into when I model inside of the application. This keeps it segregated from the work shared file that came from full Revit. Very nice way to keep things disconnected from the work shared team workflow. All right, so with that being said, now I can go and save the file that I made modifications to it. Here's the trick. When I go do a save as project, you'll see it actually appended the name of the original central file with LT. If I try to save over top of that, it doesn't let me because I'm currently accessing it. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save over top of the original file I opened inside the Revit LT users folder. Now, when you go and work share a file inside full Revit, you come over here to options to verify that it's going to make it the central file, but you'll notice those options are removed inside a Revit LT. So I'm just going to OK and save. And yeah, I'm going to overwrite the original file. And once it's done, I'm going to close it down so that I can get to it within Windows. So now back in Windows, the BIM lead can go into that Revit LT users folder, copy that file back into the full Revit users folder, and overwrite the original central file. Now that that's been accomplished, within full blown Revit, I can go open up the central file and make it the central again. So this is a step that has to be initiated on the Revit side. I have to go open up the copied file from Revit Lite and then save it as the new central file for the work shared team. So once it opens here, I'll go back up to save as project and inside the options of full Revit, you can see here that there's the check boxes I was talking about that were removed from Revit Lite. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to save it as the new central file and then close down the central file. Now the team can access the central file with the light changes. So I would go back in, try to open a central. This time it'll give me the checkbox to create new local and I select open. Because I already have a local file, I'm just going to append and timestamp this one that it's making. And in a minute it should open up the project. I'm going to go open up the 3D view and then tile the views side by side. 
So the functionality is now back whereby I can go in there and color code by work sets. Now let's do this in the plan view where I made the modifications from Revit Lite. So I'm going to color code in the plan view here. And the one thing I'll notice is that the furniture here is a different color. So something's amiss here. All right, so the dimension that the Revit Lite user put in took care of itself. It went on the right work set, but these desks are in the wrong location. So what I can do now is I can go and move these things into the right work set. So what I need to do is open up the work sets dialog and basically delete the Revit LT users work set. And when I do this, you'll see that it wants to move the information that's on that work set to another work set inside my file. I'm going to pick fit out. And when I hit OK, and I hit OK, the colors will immediately update to the fit out side of things. So just like that, we can go back and forth between Revit, and we don't lose any functionality back in Revit after it's been worked on in Revit Lite. It's just a matter of file management back and forth between the two products and doing it in the appropriate sequence. Now this can be accessed from the wiki help as well if you're not sure the step-by-step -step process. So take a look at that document when you have a chance and review it thoroughly before you begin moving the file back and forth between the two products.